Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Charts with Dan. We've got a lot to go over today. It's been several weeks since our last episode, so we've got Nielsen charts to catch up on, Netflix charts to catch up on, a whole new year of stuff to talk about. But before we do any of that, I want to talk about one of the buzziest new streaming series that came out just a few weeks ago that has recently been picked up for a second and third season, and that is Netflix's live-action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. It was a very highly anticipated show, and there have been a lot of very divisive discussions about it. Some people love it, some people hate it. There are a lot of people in between, and that led to a lot of speculation about whether it was going to get that pickup to continue going on. So what I wanna talk about to lead off the show is the performance of Avatar The Last Airbender so far, where it stands historically as far as Netflix ratings, and whether it earned that second season pickup when you compare it to other shows that Netflix has put out. And specifically, I want to look at its performance in comparison to a show that came out last year, which is One Piece. I think that these shows share a lot of DNA. They're both beloved adaptations of stories that were animated shows that are either anime or influenced heavily by anime. These were both first chapters in these ongoing stories They had similar budgets and similar episode counts, and they both also had very passionate existing fan bases that were somewhat skeptical of a live action adaptation and whether they could actually pull this off for the Netflix series. One Piece was renewed two weeks after its debut for one additional season. Avatar The Last Airbender was renewed 11 days after its debut for two final seasons. So let's talk about these two shows and how they compare. And let's focus first of all on Avatar The Last Airbender and its performance as far as Netflix's historical renewal cycle. Let's look first of all at this chart. I invented it for One Piece, the first season of One Piece. These are the first week hours watched viewing numbers for new Netflix series from 2021 until present, basically since Netflix has been supplying this data. So limited series aren't included here. This is just season one of series that were supposed to continue. And you can see that based on the hours watched in week one, Avatar The Last Airbender had the third most hours watched of any season one debut since 2021. Wednesday, easily with 341.2 million hours watched, was the most watched debut season in the last few years, followed by The Night Agent season one. Then you have Avatar at 153.4 million hours, and One Piece is actually right below Avatar at 140.1 million hours. And when you look at these 10 shows, which also includes The Watcher, All of Us Are Dead, FUBAR, Squid Game, The Challenge, Vikings Valhalla, Hala in 1899, only 1899 of these 10 shows, and it's in the 10 spot, did not go on to get a second season. So really from the jump for Netflix not to have renewed Avatar for more seasons would have been completely flying in the face of convention because given those viewership numbers, almost everything else in that league has been picked up for additional seasons. Let's look at One Piece versus Avatar The Last Airbender as far as weekly views. We now have three weeks of data on Avatar The Last Airbender, and you can see that in week one, One Piece received 18.5 million views. That's basically taking all of the watch hours and dividing it by the runtime. Avatar The Last Airbender had a slightly better week one at 21.2 million views. In the second week, One Piece had 19.3 million views versus Avatar The Last Airbender at 19.9. So Avatar, again, just with the slight edge, but in week three, One Piece actually comes out on top with 10 million views versus Avatar The Last Airbender's 9.1 million views, and that's a number that I'm going to be watching. We'll talk about it going forward on the show. Avatar The Last Airbender having slightly better first weeks than One Piece had as far as total views, but we see perhaps a trend starting where One Piece had better legs, I guess the streaming version of legs, than Avatar The Last Airbender, and if the week four numbers are significantly higher than One Piece, then I think we can definitely call this a trend, so that's something to watch as well. One Piece went on to spend eight weeks on the Netflix top 10 charts for shows in the English language for a total of 63.48 million views. It was the 15th most watched program of 2023 on Netflix of all types, movies and shows, and the third most watched show behind The Night Agent and Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story. So when you look at the viewership for Avatar, week one views, it was absolutely in the historical range for Netflix to pick it up for additional seasons, and it compared very favorably to One Piece through its first three weeks 
of release, especially given the fact that One Piece was also picked up for a second season. But let's also look at reviews comparatively and how that might affect the future of both shows. The big difference here is that One Piece was picked up for an individual second season, whereas Avatar The Last Airbender has been picked up for both of its existing remaining seasons. So it's not really like they're going to cancel that season three. They may even, who knows, shoot them back to back. But let's look at the reviews for both shows, and there is a bit more of a distinct difference here. When you look at Rotten Tomatoes, the first season of One Piece had an 85% generally from critics and a 95% audience rating, so a positive reaction to that show. When you look at season one of Avatar The Last Airbender, it had a barely fresh 61% from 74 critics as well as a 75% audience rating, so lower in that regard. When you look at Metacritic, which looks more at how much critics and audiences liked a certain thing, One Piece received a 67 out of 100 Metacritic score, which they categorize as generally favorable reviews, with a 7.9 score from users on Metacritic. When you look at Avatar The Last Airbender on Metacritic, it had a 56 average score, which they indicate as mixed or average reviews, and a 6.4 user score. And then when you look at the IMDb ratings of both shows, you can see that One Piece has an 8.3 out of 10 versus a 7.3 out of 10 for Avatar The Last Airbender, so a one-point differential between those two. One Piece also had a much higher percentage of 10 out of 10 ratings. 45% of all ratings for the One Piece show were 10 out of 10 versus just 23.9% for Avatar The Last Airbender. And I don't think that the disparity in ratings can be categorized to review bombing for Avatar The Last Airbender. Only 4.5% of Avatar's ratings were 1 out of 10, which is somewhat comparable to the 3.1% of ratings that were 1 out of 10 for One Piece. It really just seems like that there were far more ratings in that 8 to 7 range for The Last Airbender than there were for One Piece. So when you look at all of these numbers together, it paints a pretty clear picture, which is that Avatar, viewership-wise, was right up there and above slightly to this point where One Piece was, and so it makes complete sense that it was going to get picked up for additional seasons. I honestly think that the pickup was already in Netflix's back pocket, that they were already planning to do seasons two and three, unless there was some sort of a catastrophic rating situation or some sort of a catastrophic critical reaction, which there really wasn't. But the storyline going forward, I think, when we look at these two shows, is what the fans think of these additional seasons. Because One Piece has a distinct advantage as far as critical opinion and viewer opinion, and That's what Avatar The Last Airbender really has to overcome if it wants to be regarded as a show of the same quality of One Piece. It's the same quantitatively, basically, to this point, but qualitatively, The Last Airbender has a lot of ground to make up in the future. Now, there are obviously a lot of fans pro and con when you talk about something as popular as Avatar The Last Airbender that would have very different answers to the question of whether the show deserved a second season pickup, but that's what we like to do here on the show. We like to look at the numbers. By the numbers, it did deserve that pickup, and now it's going to be up to the creatives making the show and then to the fans watching the show whether those additional seasons were worth that pickup. All right, let's move on now to the charts themselves. And as I mentioned, we have a lot of ground to cover. Let's look at some of the more recent charts right now before we delve into our backlog of weeks. And we'll start, as we often do, with the iTunes store. What are the top digital rentals and purchases on iTunes right now? This is as of yesterday when I was making the show, March 16th. And the number one film digitally on iTunes is Anyone But You, which is pretty much wrapped up its theatrical run and is now available for digital purchase and rental. It's number one. At number two, is Oppenheimer, the movie that just won Best Picture. A lot of people watching it. It's available for purchase and rental. And actually, when you look at this chart, six of these 10 movies are all Best Picture nominees and or Oscar winners. In third place is a movie that was neither and will be neither, which is Argyle, currently available for purchase in premium video on demand. And ditto number four, Madam Web, unlikely to be seen at the Oscars, also available for purchase in premium video on demand. Two-time Oscar winner The Zone of Interest is in fifth place, available for purchase and rental. Best Adapted Screenplay winner, American Fiction, is available for purchase and rental at number six. Best Original Screenplay winner, Anatomy of a Fall, is available for purchase and rental at number seven. Best Actress and many other award winner, Poor Things, is at number eight, available for purchase and rental. Then we have Timothy Chalamet at number nine with Wonka and Best Supporting Actress winner, The Holdovers, in 10th place, 
also available for purchase and rental. Looking at the top 10 offerings on Amazon Prime Video as of yesterday, March 16th, at number one is the animated series Invincible, which I believe just ended its mid-season break. In second place is the Amazon original movie Ricky Stanicki, followed by My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3, which had an unimpressive box office run last year. The Liam Neeson film Marlowe is in fourth place. The Amazon original series Reacher, despite wrapping up its run a few weeks ago, is at number five. The original Amazon series Mr. and Mrs. Smith is at number six. Five Nights at Freddy's is at number seven. Judy Justice, which is the new show from Judge Judy, is at number eight. Has Been Hotel, the original Amazon series, is at number nine. And the Amazon original movie Upgraded is at number 10. All right, let's dive into the backlog of ratings weeks we have for various different streaming services. And we will start with the home of both Avatar The Last Airbender and One Piece, which is Netflix. And we'll pick up where we left off last time, the week of January 22nd through the 28th, 2024, so late January. That was the week that Griselda debuted on Netflix at a big number one, 20.58 million views in its first week of release with over 113 million hours watched. Griselda stars Sofia Vergara as the notorious Miami drug kingpin. The Netflix original movie Lyft continued its impressive run in second place with 17.39 million views. In third place was Badland Hunters, a Netflix original movie from South Korea, part of their partnership to make Korean content at 14.32 million views. The Netflix movie 60 Minutes is in fourth, followed by American Nightmare Season 1 in fifth, Society of the Snow in sixth place with over 10 million views. The movie Mind Cage comes in seventh place, followed by the Netflix original movie The Kitchen, Fool Me Once in ninth, and The Hill, 2023's uplifting sports film starring Dennis Quaid and Colin Ford in 10th place. Moving on to the week of January 29th through February 4th, Griselda remained number one with another 20.62 million total views, followed by Badland Hunters. The We Are the World documentary The Greatest Night in Pop debuted in third place with 11.88 million views, followed by the Netflix original animated film written by Charlie Kaufman, Orion and the Dark with 10 million views in fourth place. Lyft comes in fifth place. The shark film Deep Fear is in sixth place. Alexander the Making of a God season one, the Netflix original series, debuts in seventh place, followed by Society of the Snow, American Nightmare season one, and the film Animal. For the week of February 5th through February 11th, Despicable Me 3 was the most watched program on Netflix worldwide at 15.93 million views, and it wasn't the only Minion film on this chart, as you'll see. In second place was Orion in the Dark, followed by Griselda. Then the Netflix original film, Lover, Stalker, Killer. In fifth place, we have Minions at 9.56 million. Then Despicable Me 2 in sixth at just over 9 million. And Despicable Me in seventh at 7.3 million. Only Despicable Me 3 of these movies, and we'll see it when we look at the Nielsen numbers, was a huge crossover hit to just the U.S. market. So a lot of these films also popular around the world, enough so that four of these 10 spots here are taken up by those movies. That bodes well for the box office performance worldwide of Despicable Me 4 this year. In eighth place was the Netflix debut, although it's not a Netflix original series, of The Tourist Season 1 at 6.79 million. Then we have Badland Hunters in ninth place and the film American Assassin in 10th place. Looking at the most watched programs on Netflix from February 12th through the 18th, at number one was the Netflix original movie Players starring Gina Rodriguez and Damon Wayans Jr. right around Valentine's Day at 16.29 million views, followed by Lover, Stalker, Killer, I guess also right around Valentine's Day at 14.4 million views. Then we have Despicable Me in third place, the debut of the limited series One Day in fourth at 9.94 million views, the documentary Einstein and the Bomb, which I think was probably timed to peak interest in opposite Oppenheimer during award season comes in fifth place at 8.5 million views. Then we have Minions in sixth, Orion in the Dark in seventh, The Abyss in eighth, but not James Cameron's The Abyss. This is a Swedish film, not to be confused with the Cameron film that will soon be issued for the first time on high definition. I'm excited about that. The Netflix film Ashes comes in ninth place, and in tenth place is the return of Love is Blind season six with 6.27 million views. For February 19th through the 25th, The Abyss goes up to the top of the Netflix watch charts at 22.26 million views. And there we have the debut of Avatar The Last Airbender, which was just out of the top spot 
on its opening week at 21.16 million views. Right behind Avatar is Tyler Perry's latest film, Mea Culpa, at 16 million views. Remember, he has a huge overall deal with Netflix. In fourth place was the third film in the Through My Window series with 13.83 million views. Then we have One Day in fifth, Love is Blind in sixth, Players in seventh, Einstein and the Bomb at eighth, Despicable Me three and ninth, and the Netflix original series Can I Tell You a Secret? in 10th place. Looking at the week of February 26th through March 3rd, and this is interesting because Avatar The Last Airbender once again barely misses out on the top spot. Number one goes to Code 8 Part 2 with 20 million total views. The Last Airbender was right behind with 19.89 million views, and it seems very likely that season one of Avatar The Last Airbender will have merited the ordering of two additional seasons without ever actually being the most watched program globally on Netflix kind of like how Oppenheimer was never number one at the domestic box office. Very interesting situation there. In third place was Mea Culpa at 18.45 million views, followed by Through My Window 3. In fifth place was Spaceman, a space drama starring Adam Sandler from director Johan Renk. In sixth place is Code 8, the movie from which Code 8 Part 2 was spun off. That's how that works. 7.76 million views, followed by The Abyss, Love is Blind, One Day, and Despicable Me 3. Finally, the last week for which we currently have data, it's March 4th through the 10th. At number one was the film Damsel, starring Millie Bobby Brown, which had a really strong debut as far as total views, 35.35 million views in its first few days of availability. In second place was The Gentleman Season 1, a series adaptation of Guy Ritchie's film with 12.2 million views total. Then we have Spaceman in third, Avatar The Last Airbender slipping to fourth, Fury Season 1 at 7.02 million views. It's a drama series from France. Again, that name is Furies. Furies. Look out. There's not an extra R there. At sixth is Code 8 Part 2. In seventh place is The Program, Cons, Cults, and Kidnapping, a Netflix docuseries. The original Code 8 is at number eight, fittingly. Mea Culpa drops to number nine. And the Netflix original movie, My Name is Lo Kiwan, which is a drama from South Korea, rounds out the chart at number 10. We've only checked in on this chart once this year, which means, of course, there are a lot of changes. These are the top 10 most watched programs on Netflix in 2024. Lyft moves up to number one. That Netflix original movie has clocked 98.93 million views this year. This is all views, by the way, since January 1st. Society of the Snow is at number two at 94.5 million views, an Oscar-nominated film there. The limited series Fool Me Once drops down to third at 90.57 million views. Then we have Griselda debuting on the chart at 62.2 million views. Avatar The Last Airbender has broken 50 million total views and is currently the fifth most watched Netflix program of 2024. Then we have American Nightmare Season 1 at number 6. Money Heist Berlin dropping to number 7. Despicable Me 3 entering the chart with 41.2 million total views at number 8. Badland Hunters at 41.08 million views at number 9. And Tyler Perry's Mia Culpa at number 10 with 39.55 million views. Views. So we have a full 50% turnover from the last time we looked at this chart. The Equalizer 3, Rebel Moon Part 1, the Super Mario Brothers movie, The Brothers Son, and The Abyss are all off of this chart after appearing on it last time. Also, some alterations on the top 10 most viewed programs on Netflix since 2021 when they began publishing this data. First of all, we look at the most viewed Netflix films in that time period. The top five haven't changed. Red Notice is at an easy number one with 230.9 million views, followed by Don't Look Up, Extraction, The Atom Project, and Bird Box. But Leave the World Behind, which was released at the very end of 2023, is now the sixth most watched Netflix film since 2021. It bumps the the Gray Man down to number seven, We Can Be Heroes down to number eight, The Mother down to number nine, Glass Onion to number 10, and Extraction 2 off the chart altogether. And Leave the World Behind is also one of the 10 most viewed Netflix programs since June of 2021. Squid Game remains number one at 268.27 million views, followed by Wednesday Season 1, then Red Notice, Don't Look Up, and Extraction. The Atom Project is in sixth place, Bird Box is in seventh, Leave the World Behind, now the eighth most watched Netflix program on this list. That bumps Stranger Things 4 down to number nine, and The Gray Man down to number 10. We Can Be Heroes drops off the chart altogether. 
So that's our catch up on the Netflix data. Now we're gonna go back and look at the Nielsen streaming charts. These charts are delayed by a few weeks, which means we don't quite get to do them in as real time as we do Netflix. And when we did our last episode, we basically had gone all the way up to the end of 2023. So we pick up the Nielsen charts now at the beginning of the year all the way back to the week of January 1st through the 7th. And let's see how these different streaming services have measured up so far this year. For the weekend of January 1st through the 7th, the most watched streaming movie in the U.S., per the data provided by Nielsen, was The Equalizer 3 at 16.9 million hours viewed, followed by Aquaman available on Max and also Netflix. This is something to keep in mind, and we see this a lot. There are a lot of movies on this top 10 chart that say they're available on Max and Netflix, but it's obvious that the boost in viewership was because Max has started licensing a lot of their programming to Netflix. So we see a big, big bump in viewership, even though I have to say, because they are, that they're technically available on both services. Aquaman in second at 15.9 million views. Those Who Wish Me Dead, which is one of those Max direct-to-streaming movies back in 2021, is at number three with 11.4 million hours watched. Then we have Society of the Snow in its debut week at 9.9 million hours watched. Then we have John Wick at number five, making its debut over on Netflix, followed by the Super Mario Brothers movie at number six, John Wick Chapter 2, at number seven, Meg 2 The Trench, available on Max and Netflix at number eight, The Crudes at number nine, and then Elvis, also licensed to Netflix, at number 10, at 6.88 million views. Looking at the most watched streaming shows for January 1st through the 7th, Fool Me Once debuts with 50.6 million hours watched total. That's an easy number one. Reacher in second place, followed by Young Sheldon, Bluey, Grey's Anatomy, NCIS, Suits, The Big Bang Theory, The Crown, and then The Brother's Son on Netflix. The delay in reporting is such that The Brother's Son has already been canceled, but it debuted as one of the overall most watched streaming shows in its first week of availability. 11.6 million hours watched. And when you look at the watch time per available episode for the top streaming shows. Fool Me Once had a watch time of 6.3 million hours watched per episode. That was eight episodes, constituting the full run of the series. In second place was Dave Chappelle, The Dreamer, a stand-up special, which generated 6.27 million hours watched per episode, which, of course, would be one. You Are What You Eat, which was a Netflix docuseries, was in second at 2.6 million hours watched per episode, followed by Disney Plus's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. We're going to talk more about this show in just a few minutes at 2.6 million hours watched per episode. Reachers in fifth, followed by The Brother's Son, which brought in 1.45 million hours watched per episode. My Life with the Walter Boys was in seventh. Money Heist Berlin in eighth. The Act in ninth. And Tacoma FD at number 10. Looking at the most watched streaming movies for January 8th through the 14th, we saw the debut of Lyft at 14.5 million hours watched, easily the most watched movie of the week. Society of the Snow is up at number two with 10.3 million hours watched. Then we have The Equalizer 3, The Crudes, and the Super Mario Brothers movie rounding out the top five. Then we have five new movies. The Single Moms Club making a debut on Netflix is at number six. Killers of the Flower Moon debuted on Apple TV Plus at number seven with just over five million hours watched. Then Amazon Role play comes in at number eight. Elemental, something that we've seen on the charts a lot on Disney Plus, comes in at number nine, returning to the chart with 4.7 million hours watched. And Barbie over on Max comes back onto the charts at number 10 with 4.1 million hours watched. We've seen Barbie on the charts, often on the charts, a few times during its run on Max, and it's put up all right numbers, but it's going to be very interesting to me if Max decides to license Barbie out to Netflix eventually, if we see a big jump in viewership for Barbie, I'm thinking that we do. This is something that's been a recurring theme in late 2023 going into 2024. Things like Young Sheldon and a lot of different movies and other series that have been on Max forever but get a huge viewership spike when they go over to Netflix. There's some very interesting dynamics going on right now in the streaming wars. For the most streamed shows on January 8th through the 14th, Fool Me Once remains at number one at 39.9 million hours, followed by Bluey, Reacher, Young Sheldon, and Grey's Anatomy. The Brother's Son is at number six. Louder Milk, which was a show that wrapped up a few years ago, had a big resurgence on Netflix. It comes in at number seven with 14.1 million hours watched, followed by NCIS at number eight, and then the lonely, lowly debut of Echo at number nine with 12.18 million hours watched. Spoiler alert, 
chart. This is the only appearance that Echo will make on this chart. The top 10 is rounded out by Suits with over 11 million hours watched. And when we look at the most watched hours per available episode, Fool Me Once, again, an easy number one at 4.99 million. Echo was number two. They dropped all five episodes at the same time. Those episodes generated 2.44 million hours of watch time per episode, but we're not going to get any more data because it falls off of the top 10 completely after this week. Percy Jackson and the Olympians is in third with over 2 million hours watch per episode, followed by the brother's son with another 2 million hours watch per episode. You Are What You Eat is at number five. The Peacock series Ted, which debuted with all seven of its episodes, is at number six with 1.29 million hours watch watched per episode. So it didn't make the overall top 10, but it does when you look at it as far as hours watched per episode. Reacher's at number seven. Boy Swallows Universe is at number eight. My Life with the Walter Boys is at number nine. And Louder Milk is at number 10. For January 15th through the 21st, Lyft is again the number one movie on the chart, followed by The Legend of Tarzan, which made a debut on Netflix at 10.7 million. The Super Mario Brothers movie is in third place. Killers of the Flower Moon moves up to fourth. Queen Pins debuts on Netflix in fifth place with 7.1 million hours. Then we have Amazon's Role Play, Fast X returning to the chart with availability on Amazon after completing a run over on Peacock at 4.4 million hours watched. The Equalizer 3 remains at number eight. Queen Bees on Netflix debuts at number nine and Society of the Snow rounds out the top 10. For the top streaming shows on January the 15th to the 21st, Bluey moves back up to the number one spot at 25 million hours watched, followed by Reacher at number two, Young Sheldon at number three, the debut of American Nightmare at number four with 18.6 million hours watched, Grey's Anatomy rounding out the top five, followed by Fool Me Once at number six, the debut of This Is Us, which was available, you guessed it, on Netflix at 15.4 million hours watched. Then we have NCIS Suits and then The Big Bang Theory, which is currently only available on Max, also returning to the top 10. Looking at watch time per available episode, American Nightmare is an easy number one at 6.21 million. Fool Me Once had 2.2 million hours watched per episode. Then we have Percy Jackson and the Olympians at 1.47 million. Reacher at 1.28 million. And The Brother's Son still in the top five at just over 1 million hours watched per episode. Boy Swallows Universe is at number six. Ted remains in the top 10 at number seven. The Traders, Peacock's villainous competition show, is at number eight with 446,000 hours watched per episode. Then Coco Melon at number nine and Louder Milk at number 10. For January 22nd through the 28th, and we saw this debut on the Netflix charts worldwide, the most watched movie, according to Nielsen, was The Hill, that 2023 sports film, at 12.2 million hours watched, followed by The Legend of Tarzan at number two, Lyft at number three, The Super Mario Brothers movie at number four, and Killers of the Flower Moon staying in the top five at number five. Queen Pens is at number six, Dumb Money debuts at number seven, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One, I think they've dropped the part one for the streaming debut, was on Paramount Plus and debuted debuts at number eight with 4.9 million hours watched. Elemental returns to the charts at 3.5 million hours watched and Queen Bees rounds out the top 10 at 3.4 million hours watched. As far as the most watched streaming shows for this week, it was the week that Griselda debuted and it was, as it was on the Netflix charts, the most watched show in the US with 26.5 million hours watched. Bluey moves down to number two, Grey's Anatomy to number three, and Young Sheldon to number four. This Is Us is at number five, Reacher's at number six, The Big Bang Theory is at number seven, American Nightmare is at number eight, Fool Me Once is at number nine, and NCIS is at number 10. Looking at most hours watched per available episode this week, Griselda also holds down the top spot here at 4.42 million hours watched per episode, but very close behind is American Nightmare at 3.76 million hours watched per episode. Then we have Fool Me Once at number three, Percy Jackson and the Olympians at number four, still over a million hours watched per episode. The Brother's Son is at number five, Reacher's at number six, Love on the Spectrum is at number seven, Ted is at number eight, Louder Milk's at number nine, and The Traders is at number 10. For the week of January 29th through February 4th, the most watched movie in the U.S. was The Greatest Night in Pop, the We Are the World documentary, at 7.2 million hours watched, followed closely by The Postcard Killings on Netflix and the Super Mario Brothers movie in third place. The Hill is in fourth place. The Vow debuts on the chart in fifth place. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning stays on the chart at number six. Orion in the Dark debuts at number seven with 5.1 million hours watched. Amazon's The Underdogs debuts at number eight with 4.3 million hours watched, and then Pacific Rim on Netflix debuts at number nine with 4.1 million hours watched. Elemental 
rounds out the top 10. Looking at the most watched streaming shows for the same week, Griselda remains at number one with 28.7 million hours watched total, followed by Young Sheldon at number two, Bluey at number three, the debut of Mr. and Mrs. Smith on Amazon Prime Video with 16 million hours watched total, Grey's Anatomy's at number five, The Big Bang Theory's at number six, Suits returns to the chart. It dropped off for the first time in many months, but it's back this week at just over 12 million hours watched. NCIS is at number eight, This Is Us is at number nine, and True Detective returns to the chart with its new season at number 10 with 10.8 million hours watched. As far as most hours watched per episode, Griselda is at number one at 4.8 million. Mr. and Mrs. Smith debuts with 2 million hours watched per episode, followed closely by American Nightmare. Then we have Alexander, The Making of a God at 1.2 million hours watched per episode. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, though, right behind at number five, followed by Love on the Spectrum US, Fool Me Once, Reacher, Coco Melon, and True Detective. For February 5th through the 11th, the most watched streaming movie was The Marvels, which made its Disney Plus debut with 9.3 million hours watched. It was followed very closely by American Assassin on Netflix at 8.5 million hours watched. Orion in the Dark is in third place. The Super Mario Brothers movie is in fourth. Made in Italy, which is available on both Hulu and Netflix, is in fifth, followed by Lover Stalker Killer on Netflix, debuting at number six, Ready Player One, debuting at number seven, Seraphim Falls, debuting at number eight. Those are all films available on Netflix. Then we have The Vow at number nine and Elemental at number 10. The most watched streaming show for that week, February 5th through the 11th, was Young Sheldon on Max and Netflix at 22.4 million hours watched, followed by Bluey, Grey's Anatomy, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, True Detective moving into the top five, Griselda at number six, Royal Pains on Netflix and Amazon at number seven, The Big Bang Theory at number eight, NCIS at number nine, and Suits at number 10. Looking at most hours watched per available episode, Griselda holds on to the top spot at two million hours watched per episode with Mr. and Mrs. Smith in second place the tourist in third place at 700,000 hours watched per episode fool me once in fourth place halo which debuted its new season is in fifth at 536,000 hours watched per episode percy jackson and the olympians remains on the chart at number six true detective at number seven one day at number eight the reacher at number nine and the traitors at number 10 and this week looks to be the last week that we're going to have data for percy jackson and the olympians unless it makes a jump back into the top 10 which to be fair has happened in the past so I wanted to look at its viewership numbers as compared to other prominent Disney Plus series that debuted in 2023. And I'll also grandfather in Echo since it debuted right at the beginning of 2024. And when we look at the Disney Plus original series that were premiering or continuing last year, this is in millions of hours watched as reported by Nielsen. What If comes in last at 8.55 million hours watched, followed by Echo at 12.18. Again, this doesn't mean they only got that many watch hours, but these were the only ones that were reported by Nielsen. The Santa Clauses comes in with 16.15 million hours watched, followed by Goosebumps at 31.67, although that was a cross-platform show available on both Disney Plus and Hulu. Secret Invasion comes in at 42 million hours watched. Then we have Ahsoka and Loki, very close. Ahsoka generated 67.82 million hours watched versus Loki's 68.13, although keep in mind that's all seasons of Loki versus one season of Ahsoka. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, you can see there, the second most watched as far as Netflix reporting, Disney original series of 2023 at 72.97 million hours watched, surpassed only by The Mandalorian, which had 100 139.75 million hours reported. Although again, keep in mind that is all seasons of The Mandalorian. Nielsen does not separate out which seasons got which views. So Percy Jackson and the Olympians was a rating success for Disney, especially when you look at it in comparison to the other original shows of the year. So it's really no surprise that it has been picked up for more episodes and hopefully they can build off of what they started in this first season. We have one last week to look at as far as Nielsen data, and that's for the week of February 12th through the 18th. We're going back about a month at this point. That was the week that Oppenheimer debuted for streaming on Peacock, and it was the most streamed movie in the U.S. at 10.2 million hours. Lover, Stalker, Killer on Netflix is in second place, followed by the Super Mario Brothers in third. Players on Netflix debuts in fourth place with 6 million hours watched, followed by the Marvels dropping down to fifth place. 2021's Dune on various different services in sixth place. Moana returning to the chart. It's been a while since Moana was in the top 10 at 4.8 million hours watched. American Assassins at number 8. Orion in the Dark is at number 9. And Seraphim Falls is at number 10. 
As far as the most watched streaming shows for the week of February 12th to the 18th, Bluey is up at the number one spot with 19.55 million hours watched. It is a new streaming juggernaut. Young Sheldon is in second place. Love is Blind returns in third place at 15.1 million hours, followed by Grey's Anatomy and True Detective rounding out the top five. NCIS is in sixth place. Suits is in seventh place. Monk, which is a real classic show available on various different networks, is in eighth place. It's always nice to see a new show pop up. 10.6 million hours watched. Again, I'm just going to say TikTok's the reason that it's up there in the top 10. Royal Pains is in ninth place and Criminal Minds returns to the chart in 10th place. Looking at the most watched streaming shows per available episode, Griselda remains number one. 1.28 million hours watched per episode. Mr. and Mrs. Smith in second place at just over 866,000 hours hours watch per episode then we have masters of the air making its debut here on the most watch per episode chart at 810,000 hours watch per episode halo is in fourth place house of ninjas is in fifth one day is in sixth true detective is in seventh reacher is in eighth place love is blind is in ninth place and the netflix series lose the light of the heart rounds out the top 10 with just over 194,000 hours watch per episode. We now have data for 2024, which means I can debut some of the 2024 charts for the Netflix ratings. Here are the most watched streaming movies through February 18th of this year. At number one is the Super Mario Brothers movie on Netflix, which has had 49.9 million watch hours in the United States. And keep in mind, that's this year. That doesn't count any streaming that was done in 2023. And Super Mario Brothers is a great example of what I like to call the Netflix effect. I was talking about it with Max earlier as well. Super Mario Brothers had a window where it streamed on Peacock and it did pretty well, but it exploded as soon as it hit Netflix, not only worldwide, but also domestically. I know that every different streaming service wants to carve out their own niche, but it's very, very clear that Netflix is still the place to go for huge breakout success more often than not. There are a lot of individual things, of course, that are broken out on other streaming services, but Netflix consistently provides a boost to things that were previously only available on one of the other streaming services. The second most watched movie this year so far is Lyft at 38.9 million hours watched, followed by The Equalizer 3 in third place, Society of the Snow in fourth, Killers of the Flower Moon, the fifth most watched movie of the year so far. Perhaps that Apple strategy is working out okay. 18.7 million hours watched there. The Hill is in sixth place, The Legend of Tarzan in seventh, Aquaman in eighth, Elemental in ninth, and Orion in the Dark rounding out the top 10 in 10th place. Looking at the most watched original streaming series of the year through February 18th, Fool Me Once is at number one with 132 million hours watched total. Overall, it is the third most watched streaming series of the year, according to Nielsen. Reacher's in second place at over 90 million hours watched. It's overall the fifth most watched streaming series of the year. Griselda is in third place as far as original series goes with 75 million hours watched and ninth overall, followed by Percy Jackson and the Olympians at 51.7 million and overall number 10 as far as most watched series of the year. The Brother's Son is in fifth place, even even though sadly it has been canceled at 42.9 million hours watched, followed by The Crown at number six, Mr. and Mrs. Smith at number seven, American Nightmare at number eight, Peacock's Ted at number nine, and The Traders also on Peacock at number 10. These are the most watched library streaming series of the year through February 18th. At number one is Bluey at 149.3 million hours watched. Also the most watched series on streaming period, according to Nielsen. Young Sheldon is at number two and also overall the second most watched streaming series of the year at 136.9 million hours watched total. Grey's Anatomy is in third place at 112.8 million. Overall the fourth most watched series of the year. NCIS, which is available on various platforms, comes in fourth place. Overall the six most watched series of the year. The Big Bang Theory is at number five at 81.2 million hours watched. Overall, the seventh most watched streaming series of the year. And then we have Suits in sixth place with 81 million hours watched and overall the eighth most watched series of the year. This Is Us is in seventh place. Criminal Minds is in eighth. Louder Milk is in ninth. And this kind of confuses me and I haven't been able to find an answer. For some reason, Nielsen has categorized True Detective as a library streaming series, even though the show started out at Toronto on HBO airs on HBO still is a max exclusive as of right now. I don't know exactly why True Detective is being classified as a library series, but because I'm reporting Nielsen data, I feel like I should continue to categorize these shows as Nielsen categorizes them. So for now, True Detective will stay in that library category, although I'm not quite sure why it's there to begin with. 
there have been some changes as far as the most watched streaming movies in the US, total hours viewed from 2020 to now. This is all based off of Nielsen reporting. Encanto and Moana remain easily the most watched. Encanto with 481.3 million hours watched, Moana with over 300 million hours watched. But the Super Mario Brothers movie now moves up to the third most watched movie on streaming since 2020 at 169.4 million hours watched. That moves Luca, which was sort of entrenched in that number three spot for a while down to number four home alone which is a new entry to the chart at number five and turning red down to number six because it keeps picking up viewership elementals able to remain at number seven at 141.25 million hours watched sing two moves down to number eight elf moves down to number nine and glass onion stays at number 10 and we have some updates as far as the most watched library streaming series in the u.s since 2020 NCIS and Grey's Anatomy remain where they are at numbers one and number two, but look at how close Grey's Anatomy is to overtaking NCIS as the most watched library series since 2020. NCIS has 1.99 billion hours watched. Grey's Anatomy has 1.98 eight billion hours watched. It's just shy of 10 million hours watched away from overtaking NCIS, which it should do probably by the next time we do a streaming charts episode. That's just how popular it is. It will soon be the most watched library streaming show in the US since Nielsen started reporting these numbers. Coco Melon is at number three. Criminal Minds is at number four. Bluey is at number five, looking hopefully to sneak up on Criminal Minds soon and take that number four spot. Suits is at number six. The Big Bang Theory is at number seven. It actually moves up one spot to number seven. Supernatural moves down one spot to number eight. Gilmore Girls moves down to number nine and Heartland moves to number 10. And that does it for this edition of Streaming Charts. We do these big data dumps because I like to just kind of do it when I have a good story to talk about. We, of course, are getting into the heart of the entertainment season, so I will bring you new episodes whenever I feel like I've got something really juicy to sink my teeth into. It may be a few weeks. It may be six or eight weeks like we've been doing. We'll just have to see what happens. Thank you so much for sticking around to hear me throw all these numbers at you and to talk about things like Avatar and Percy Jackson and One Piece and all these different series that seem to have been at least not terribly letting fans down, which is different from what's happened with a lot of these properties in the past. I appreciate, as always, that you spent part of your day here with me. Be sure to stay tuned right here to the channel this upcoming week. Of course, we've got Charts with Dan. I'm going to have my review of Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, as long as all kinds of fun stuff. Thanks so much. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye.